I'm making holes in floors because there was already holes. So you have to fix a hole with a hole to start with and then you can bridge it and make it all look nice again. That is a big hole. Hello, welcome back. Yes, we are here with my Mark II Marina special where last time you saw this car, I had fixed that vinyl roof. It is now stuck back down. It looks an absolute treat. Once I've suppled up the rest of the vinyl, once I've sorted out the rear screen and taken that and done that as well, we should be a good one. So anyway, today we are taking on the rot that is on this car literally just on that front a post section at the lower part of the passenger wing and a little bit on the passenger side foot well where that plastic pipe had come off and the moisture and the water just sat inside the car well today we're going to get that sorted so is a bit of cutting a bit of grinding a bit of welding all those wonderful things you take on when you do a restoration of a 1970s British classic. So, without further ado, let's carry on! Right, check it out. We got the door off, so now you can see inside. A little bit of rust up there, which was visible before, but that's okay, I can sort that out. This is where the hinge was, and obviously it's actually bare metal. When they painted these, the hinges were on first before they painted anything. But actually, that's, that's pretty good. I've seen a lot worse than that. The back A section of that wing is absolutely pristine. So I just got to take a piece of trim off. Now, the last time, I wasn't trying to take a piece of trim off. This feels quite bristol. Ah. but it ended up breaking. So this time I'm taking the stainless trim off that goes around the arch and hopefully not bending it. First bolt snapped. Teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny. Gingerly get this off. Oh, oh. There we go. Don't break, don't bend. Ha, it's off. Dent free, bend free, and pretty good in it. And even the clips on the wing are actually still intact, apart from the two end pieces. They never survive. Have a minute's silence for the clips that don't survive. Got most of the inner sill separated from the outer sill, separated from the floor, using a combination of spot weld chisel, uh, spot weld drill, air saw, and cut off wheel because I'm trying to do an incision repair rather than having to break apart the whole area but it is nearly out so we're gonna carry on get it done Ben stop waffling you caught on caught on you little bugger come here. come here. there we go on that bulkhead it's the most awkwardest part to do this because you've got the wheel well here which is obviously shaped such that it's obviously where the wheel goes. Sometimes a bit awkward for making patterns, but we shall, we shall conquer. Conquers. It's not autumn yet, Ben. So we got the spot welds drilled out with the cutter really quick using WD-40 on it. Just makes it last longer. They'll ping off quite easily, probably with a, a spot weld chisel or even probably just with the back end of a screwdriver. I've wire wheeled onto the rust spots on the actual A post because this is pretty ropey and I want to try and keep it as low as possible below the swage line. I've just redone it so it's level because it was irritating me. Right, got that cut off, bottom of the wing, actually not too bad. Just at the right point below that swage line which means we can hopefully lose the weld a little easier. If it's also if it's metallic paint and I'm yet to know what type of metallic paint is actually on the car. Keeping it low down is always best use as little amount as a repair panel as possible. Because it's in such good condition everywhere else. I've got some bits cut out. I've now worked out that there's gonna be even more bits to cut out because the end of that sill, the outer sill, is actually worse than I thought it was gonna be. So I've gotta cut that out in a, and make a couple of patterns, hopefully from the piece that's come out. Easier on these cars or any car, once you can see behind the piece that is rotten, I find it easier to make a template because you can actually see the contours, how they work and how they fix together. Especially on something like this where the bitumen and all the rest of it has literally just covered all the spot welds. This way you can actually see behind it, cut it out as one piece and use that then to make a pattern. That is the idea. That is the plan. Will it work? It has done in the past, but now it's shown it to the world. It'll probably all flop. Listen to that sirens, you'll hear them call. Right, so this is what has come off. I've um, straightened up a little bit just so I can show how this relates to the pattern part that I'm going to fit. Because this being a genuine 
inner sill never been changed. You've got the sill step, which I've gruesomely detached from the A-post. They're not really spot welds at that point. They're just literally tacked, but very, very hard. So whatever they use was very, very tough. What I've got to go on is the pattern part, which as you can see, if I put the two together, they're quite different. So we're gonna utilize the first couple hundred millimeters, but I'm gonna section it in and hopefully pressings will line up. But don't count on that. And then what I'll do is I'll flatten their flange so it matches the original one, but then it slots back in. Once I know that is obviously gonna fit, I need to repair any parts of the floor first before the final fitment. I can hear people out there saying, fit the old panel, take the old car apart. No, doesn't need it. Why should I? It's my car, do what I want to do. Hola. Well, if you're enjoying this video, I really appreciate it if you could click that subscribe button. It really helped me to get these cars that are quite unloved back on the road. You can tell it's very cold in here today. This is the inner seal. These are the pieces just cut out. I cut them out with the air saw and it's easier to make the patterns. Well, that's how I think anyway. So I can actually join them back together in where they were. So that when I actually create the pattern, I know that they should be perfect. Uh, the inner seal we've already got pieces for, so that's the old one. We can modify the pattern part to look like that, even to the point of where my angle was a little bit off cutting it. So we know that it will uh, butt well back together okay. I want it to look factory and wanting and getting and maybe two different things. Mm. Cardboard, methinks. We're gonna fabricate the end piece. Right, so the first pattern I've gotta make is that end of the sill. Now, the outer sill, usually when you get repair panels, they're what, either cover sills that aren't full sills. Started off with just literally a piece of paper and just effectively pressed over the end of the sill to find out where the edges were, get a rough guide, find out where that's either the swage is or where it's been pressed tightly and then you can actually use that as a fold in the paper to create the next step, which is using cardboard. I don't have an English wheel, so I can't do stretch the metal before I'm actually gonna create the pattern. So what I do is in the cardboard phase of it, where I've put the cardboard over the panel, I'll put an incision in the cardboard where I know that at that point, the metal would obviously be stretched. A couple of incisions on your pattern so that when you actually come to make it in steel, those incisions would allow the metal to push up. I'm using cardboard because it's much simpler. And as you'll see, the piece comes out quite well, actually. And there's just a, then a couple of welds to make on the metal to make it all look super nice. Super. Right, another way of making a pattern is if you've cut out the piece like I have, or any part that you're obviously is quite convoluted. I mean, this is a floor piece. Fairly straightforward, but because I've cut it out with the air saw, it's a bit of an odd shape. I flattened it out on the back of the vise, and now I'll just trace it on some cardboard, put a 90 in it, and off we go. Get it done. No, stop saying get it done. Make it all look nice. On the last video, I showed you this Morris Itel front wing that I'm gonna use to repair the bottom of my wing on the Mark II Special. Right, what I've gotta do here is separate the flange that runs across the back of the wing because I've got to cut this lower piece out, which actually has turned out really good. I've stripped it all off the strip disc and actually um, the outside is actually really good. The inside is slightly pitted where moisture's obviously got behind it, but I can clean all that up, treat it, and this will be an absolutely perfect repair panel. You can buy these as actual panels from the Morris Marina Owners Club. I'll put a link in the description. If you do happen to own a marina, you're very lucky, and you can buy them. They are really nice panels, and they fit a treat. Carefully prized apart, so that I go enough beyond the swage line, cut it out, but obviously be able to reuse the flange that wraps around the back of the wing on the car. Lower wing cut off, separate it from the supporting bracket, which runs down the back side. Obviously a bit of rust underneath there. Clean all that, treat that. Flanges in one piece, so I'll just open it up a bit. So that effectively goes on there. I've measured on the wing, the swage line to the top of the wing. 500 millimeters top to the swage, effectively two datums for that because that swage line has to match up with the door. As long as I get that 500 millimeters right to the swage line here. Datums, come on, get on with it. Right, 
got that calf, it is level, it is in the right place. I nearly cut it in the wrong place because I put the tape wrong. But always remember, tape is your friend and measure twice, cut once. I have got the sill end fabricated. I have checked it against the car. I've got the old piece out, which is an absolute nightmare because it is fitted between so many tiny spot welds onto the flanges and then there's a bit of a tack on the inside where somebody's obviously decided, oh, that's not enough, so they've added a bit more. Who said British cars weren't built properly? Well, they were certainly going for strength when they made this car. Okay, well, I've got the end of the sill welded back on now. That piece came out really well and actually was really, really easy to fit. The outer sill where it tucks behind the wing Thankfully, there was enough meat on that for me to butt weld the panel back on. Uh, I stitched it from top to bottom. So now that's done. Yes, I've had a haircut. I can get the re remains of the A-post plug welded back onto it, burn that in. Then I can weld the floor back in, the piece I've made for that. I can fabricate the remainder of the A-post to get it back down, tied into the outer side. Look at the bottom of this wing now. I think this panel is in the right place. Double check those measurements and I'm gonna slit across with the grinder because it is pretty good. So I used the masking tape to line up and then scribe it across which leaves me a lovely line. But now what I've got to do, a number of final checks. It's like a bin aircraft pilot. Final checks with fitting panels. Oh yes. Oh yes. Look at that. Boom. That ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. It's okay, I'll just stick it on my masking tape, be fine, nobody notice, because it's the same colour. But, just got to treat all that area first, and the back of the wing. Can't leave it like that. So there we go, all prepped, all treated, perfectly, with some nice epoxy primer on the back of that. This side's still in bare metal, because of course, got to weld it. So it can all be primed and treated once I've got some filler on there and everything, but the back side's treated because it'll be harder to do once it's back on the car. Got the seam sealer on, looks really cool, really happy with that. Just literally masked up, just to make it look a little bit neater. I know you won't see it, I know it doesn't matter, but it does matter. Keep the moisture out of those gaps, protect the welds, protect the flanges from the outside for moisture getting into it. We, we don't want moisture getting into it, but also, if you put too much on, it can actually attract the moisture, and therefore, all the road, dirt, and salt, and everything like that will stick to it. So, the idea with this is, it's now on there, it's on top of the epoxy, which it can go onto. It's the same manufacturer for both products, so therefore, there is compatibility. Now, I'm gonna use some U-Pole Weld Primer, only to be used in areas where you've got a flange, two flanges come together, you want a little bit of extra protection. When you weld onto this, and you can weld onto this, oddly enough, I was looking at a review of some other product where it's called a weld through primer, but you can't actually weld on it. But this you can, and the idea is that when you weld on it, it liquefies, pours into your weld, and then stops it from going porous. And this is absolutely perfect, but only to be used on those flanges or where you're plug welding two panels together. So where I've got the bottom of this sill, I will actually have to clear off the epoxy and use some of the weld through. The epoxy isn't weldable, but the U-pole weld is. And I use a little bit, because it doesn't adhere very well to anything. It doesn't stick to things well, and things don't stick to it well. So only use it in those areas where you're actually gonna need it. Um, which for me, there's a plug weld I've got to do at the top of the wing. Um, repair and obviously there's going to be plug welds at the bottom so they're the two areas i'm going to use it on this right what i'm trying to do here is just get the panel located on the bottom of the wing obviously i cut it i scribed it i cut it and then we're putting it back on i'm using butt weld clamps i'm also using a mold grip on the end with a piece of aluminium just to act as a bit of a heat sink but also it helps level the panel to the area you're welding it to but what i just need to do is file a little bit off of the original wing just so it levels it because there's a little bit of a whoop on there which needs to sort out but it's looking good it's looking okay it's looking fine it just takes a little bit of time to get it perfect and then we can tack it <sighs> right i'm just getting this in final fit position now what i'm using are butt clamps to do a butt weld across the panel so what i've got is a piece of aluminium no, it's not. It's a piece of steel block just going along the edge just to check that it's actually straight and square to itself. What I've also done is braced 
the arch side of it with a little bit of aluminium. One to act as a heat sink when I'm welding, but also to actually bring the square edge of the arch back into the repair panel. So next is to weld it all in. Right, I got it all welded on, looks really nice. Um, really pleased with that actually. Um, took my time, just adding little tacks as I went. I did use the airline just to cool those tacks off a little, little bit, just to avoid the distortion, but I kept going through with my trusty pieces of aluminium flat edge. I also used the hammer and the dolly just to sort of make sure that it was actually still nice and true. Really pleased with that. I've gone over it with a 40 grit on the flat disc. Now I'm going to DA it, starting at an 80, working my way up to 120, 180, 240, 320 probably, just to sort of, just trying to metal finish it, make it look pretty. Making it look lots prettier. So I've exposed on the wing some layers. Now these are like, could be like treated like tree trunk layers, but rather than being aged, these are actually layers of paint or primer or both. So what we can see is we've got a layer of E-coat, which is probably the original coating the panel came to the factory floor. Then we've got a primer coat. Then we've got a top coat. And where this is a metallic paint, I'm guessing it was a lacquer coat, but I have a feeling this may have been a coating of lacquer with with a pigment in it. I'm not entirely sure how it was painted at the factory because obviously usually it would be a, a second coat of a lacquer over the top of the base coat. And then on top of that, it looks like possibly it's had a blow over in its life, which may have again been, I'm not too sure. It might not have had anything. So yes, I'm going to be attempting painting as much as I want to keep the patina of it, as much as I want to like the age it's been messed around with in the past. There's issues on the lacquer, peeling on the door, peeling on the rear lamp panel. Let's just, let's just calm down here a little bit. Let's treat one panel at a time and see how I get on. Right, I'm just going to degrease it, get it all nicely cleaned up, ready for the epoxy. Now I use um, a degreasing foam, which is something I've learned from watching a few YouTube videos. I don't know, this is the first time I've done it, so if it works, great, if it doesn't, well, we'll go back to something more conventional, but I'll get it all cleaned off, degreased, get it epoxied, and then it can sit there until I'm ready to do any more bodywork with it. Then it's on to the next job. Oh, I've achieved so much in this video, and I'm so pleased because the wing is now done, welded, DA'd, sanded, it's now ready for some filler, and that'll come in another video, because I'm absolutely shattered. So the next job, I'm not too sure. I think I'm gonna tackle the engine bay next. I think engine bay, engine gearbox, because I'd really like to get the engine into the car and running, um, and to do that, I've got to do a few things. I've got to rebuild an engine, so you know, who hasn't rebuilt a 300A series before? Well, I have, but you know. Some people haven't, so anyway. That probably will be one of the next videos, if not the next video. So, I'll see you next time. Right, so I put a post out on my YouTube page saying, thank you for all those who have subscribed. I, at the time I'd hit 500 subscribers, which is absolutely brilliant. Thank you ever so much to all of you who have subscribed. If you haven't already, please do consider it and hit the bell for notifications. It'll be absolutely great. Um, the idea of this channel is to make it a little bit of fun restoring old cars, uh, a little bit of learning maybe for me, as well as maybe tips and tricks that I've learned along my way for you. Um, but I put a post out asking, was there any questions you have of me? Um, and I got a couple of responses, um, but one of the main ones was, do I have any more videos of the van that features on my homepage, uh, the little white van, Morris Itel van? Now that van I got last year uh, off a driveway in Surrey, it had been sat there for a very long time. Um, it was uh, pretty bad. I had to fit new roof rails to it, bottoms of the A-posts. Uh, I had to repair the rear doors, both front doors. It was in quite a bad way, but it, it uh, I took a lot of photographs, but I didn't film it. There's only a couple of videos I've got of it, which when I was thinking about doing this channel, and up until that point, I hadn't really thought about you know making a YouTube channel for the restoration of the cars that I do. Um, but I did, uh, I must have had a, an idea at some stage whilst doing the van, because there is a couple of videos I've got and I'll put those in. Um, but that's it really. Um, loads of photographs of it as I did the work, um, but not a lot else. 
Um, maybe at some point I'll do a quick collage video of that. You can see um, how that turned out and what it was to start with. But it was pretty bad. But it's gone to a new home now and uh, I couldn't be happier. Um, and that's the thing with all the cars I'm doing. Um, they're cars that have been around in storage for a long time. And I'm just trying to find new homes for them really. But I want to, and I enjoy doing the work. So I'd rather do the work and get them around to somebody who's going to take them to shows. And then, you know, enjoy it and show everybody how I do things. Which may or may not be how everybody else does things. But, you know, I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying myself. It's always a good thing to do when you're doing old cars. If you don't enjoy it, don't bother. Um, sometimes you want to just shut the garage door and walk away and you can, that's great, you can, and I do sometimes. So I'm thinking a video every fortnight. There may be a couple of times that there might be a video each week, um, in a, a couple in a row, I'm not too sure. It just depends on sort of load and time and I know I need to get this car done. So that is the first challenge. I'd like to have it done in three months. That's my intention. I don't see why I can't do it in three months. Um, just depends if I find something along the way that's going to be nasty and a problem. But a post all done, so that's really cool. Um, that's hopefully the majority of the welding that's needed on this car. The rest of it's just going to be paint rectification, paintwork, mechanicalness, and all that. So stick around.